Hello, my name is James Nissler and I'll be introducing you to the vertical milling machine today. So when you enter the shop, make sure to grab a pair of safety glasses from the wall and put them on before you start using any of the machines. If you ever get a piece of metal in your eye, you'll most likely be permanently blinded. So, safety first. This is a vertical milling machine. As you can see at the top, there's the spindle which attaches there to cut into the piece of metal in the middle. There's three axes that it can operate in, so it can go left to right, up and down, or backwards and forwards. These are the spacers that we have. As you can see here in this box, there are several different sizes. We have littler ones, um, some very larger ones, and some placed in the middle as well, approximately between half inch to a full inch. So these spacers here are the ones that we're going to be using for this application. You insert them into the vice jaws, flush with the sides, and then taking the, your block of material, you'll place it on top. First you'll have to extend the vise using the vise handle. So the vise handle inserts onto the stub on the outside, and then you place the block on the inside of the vise on top of the spacers, making sure that it's flush down top. Once it is flat, make sure that it's snugged up. So the first axis we'll talk about being able to control when cutting a piece is the x-axis. As you can see here, that we have the fast travel axis control, which can either be engaged by pushing it in or disengaged by letting it swing loose outside. The fast travel allows it just to travel uh, faster back and forth. So for slower fine-tuned mo motions in the x-axis, you can use the left, left handle, which has increments right next to it, which you can then gauge off of how far you've actually traveled. So you can rotate this around to move the piece left or right. Before you actually start milling the piece, you're going to want to lock the axes, you know, the other two axes that you're not traveling in. So in the, on the left side, there is the lock for the Z axis, so it won't travel up or down. And then there, on the right, in the front of the machine, there is the lock for the Y axis, so it won't tra travel backwards and forwards. So once you have locked all of them, you can verify that you're not going to be moving backwards and forwards. So you can see here, I've locked the different axes and I'm able to lock the, Z, the X axis and so I can just travel just in the Y and I've locked the Z so I won't travel up or down. Now I'm loosening the Z so I can travel up and down but not left or right. So the other way you can control the travel in the Z direction is with the lever on the top of the milling head. And as you can see, you loosen the bolt on the left and then you can use the handle on the right to be able to bring the head down and bore into the piece. Once you're done, make sure to lock the piece back up. So before you actually start cutting the piece, make sure to put the safety visor in front of you to protect you from any flying particulates off of the block. And then you may start the machine by taking the lever and pushing it towards to the, the bit, you're going to have to use position. the two bolt attachment on the top so that you are able to screw in the collar and then the bit into the actual head. Once that's done though, you can use the Ford switch to turn that uh, machine on. These are the drill collars that you're going to want to be able to insert into the machine at the, at the head. They basically screw on inside the head and then the bit fits inside of them. You have an eighth inch, quarter inch, and half inch. If you want another drill bit, you actually have the drill to attach to. For our application, we'll be using a quarter inch. The collar inserts into the top of the head by just screwing up into it. Screw it up as far as you can and then screw it the remainder of the way using the two bolt uh, connection at the top. Once the collar is inserted into the head, you'll need to make sure that it's not too tight, but it has space to allow the bit to be able to insert in. Then use the two-bolt configuration on the top to tighten up the bit the rest of the way. To do this, you'll need the wrench that's located next to the machine. The wrench will, can rotate in the clockwise direction, snugging up the bottom bolt, and then using the handle to lock the top screw, finish tightening it up. 
This should make sure that the bit is tight inside the head. Make sure you insert the block about an inch above the bit. And then unscrew the two bolt configuration while holding onto that lever on the left side to lock the rotating spindle. Finish unscrewing it until you kind of you can't unscrew anymore. And eventually, if it doesn't pop out the bottom of the collar, you're going to need to use a mallet. Start with the wooden part, and if things get necessary, you can use the metal part. Give it a few good sharp hits, and this should allow the attach the collar to pop out of the bottom. So if the wooden part doesn't work, you might have to resort to using the metal part to drop the head out. Now the bit's loose, and the collar can be unscrewed. Once you've tightened the block down, make sure to remove the spacers from underneath the block so that you don't actually accidentally hit them with the spindle. So now that you know all the functions of the machine, you can perform your cuts and then remove your piece just doing using the handle as before. Make sure to clean up any mess and any metal shavings ahead of, after once you're done so that it's a clean workspace for others.